Interestingly, just opposite the TST ferry terminal, where one of the last pieces of artwork exists from the Kingdom of Kowloon, we have the Hong Kong Cultural Art Center. Now, whenever I see street art or graffiti, I always think to myself, oh, that's great, I wanna see more. Obviously, if they're saying so-and-so's got a big chud, then I don't wanna see more of that. But if there's some actual raw human expression, I've never said no to that, as opposed to something like this. Why should I settle for something like this when this doesn't even have any windows and it's on the waterfront? Why should I settle for this on the outside and then something like this on the inside? Personally, I find this place dead, empty, lifeless. Oh, and side note, not actually having any windows was upsetting and a bone of contention to a lot of people in Hong Kong. I've never asked to see these repetitive spaces that we can be entirely passive towards. It doesn't help that graffiti is always first viewed as a negative until graffiti achieves a level of infamy akin to say Banksy's do, and then it's celebrated wholeheartedly. Graffiti is always presented by those in culture as a counter to mainstream culture, when it's actually our culture. And when you stop and think about it, what is graffiti or street art counter to exactly? Corporate advertising? Sanctioned street art from the taste buds of a bureaucrat? Graffiti is always in the underdog position. It's always a seed of raw, unconforming emotion trying to germinate and to be disseminated to the masses. Graffiti's non-conforming presence is something that is out of control and always seems to need controlling. But I digress for a moment to continue to give my respects to the king. The contents of Tseng Zhou Choi's calligraphic graffiti usually included his name, his title, emperor or king of Kowloon, Hong Kong or China, his family tree, a variable list of about 20 individuals, the names of illustrious emperors, and the exclamation, down with the Queen of England. His complaints about the supposed misappropriation of his land were not always so formulaic, however. The graffiti of Tsang Zhou Choi was simply made with a brush and a bottle of ink, very different to the majority of the graffiti that commonly exists. Cho's style also appeared to be clumsy and disorganized, just like amateur efforts we've all seen ourselves in any city around the world. His style didn't conform to conventional calligraphic styles either. But as you can see, his style makes the absolute most out of the space he was afforded. And as you know, space comes at a premium in Hong Kong. Of course, the King of Kowloon, like any graffiti artist, was arrested for his work and several times, but with the police usually just giving him a warning or a small fine. I wonder if he ever paid those fines. Does it look like he even cared? He was a king after all. In his writing, he occasionally demanded that the government pay him land taxes anyway. So go figure.